Hello friends, welcome to the Pathology Insights. Today we will be discussing about the types of the Hodgkin's lymphoma in this video. Uh, in my previous video, I have already finished about the, the types of the RS cells and what is the etiopathogenesis of the Hodgkin's lymphoma. So today we will be discussing about what are the types, different types of the Hodgkin's lymphoma. Now when we see the lymphomas, as I told you, we have non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and Hodgkin's lymphoma. And uh, this non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is more common when compared to the Hodgkin's lymphoma. Hodgkin's lymphoma, it comprises about 1% of the all the de novo neoplasms and 40% of the adult lymphomas. And when we see the age and the sex, males are more uh, commonly affected in the Hodgkin's lymphoma and they have a bimodal age distribution. This Hodgkin's lymphoma occurs in the younger age group and also in the elderly age group. And how it presents is, uh, usually it presents as a peripheral lymphadenopathy, most commonly as the enlargement of the cervical lymph nodes, and then it spreads to the extranodal sites. Now, the types of Hodgkin's lymphoma, it has been classified into classic Hodgkin's lymphoma and nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin's lymphoma. So as I already told you in my previous video, the basis for the classification of this is immunophenotyping of the RS cells. So in the classic Hodgkin's lymphoma, we have again the four types, nodular sclerosis, mixed cellularity, lymphocyte rich and lymphocyte depletion. But the RS cells present in all the four types has the same immunophenotyping. Whereas RS cells present in the nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin's lymphoma has a different immunophenotyping. So that has been taken as a basis to classify Hodgkin's lymphoma into classic and nodular lymphocyte predominant type of the Hodgkin's lymphoma. Now when we see the types which is most common, so we have a nodular sclerosis. This is the most commonest type. It comprises about 65 to 75 percent of the Hodgkin's lymphoma cases. Next common is mixed cellularity. Now this comprises about 20% to 25% of the Hodgkin's lymphoma cases. Next, uh, in, uh, next common one is the nodular lymphocyte predominant. It comprises of 10%. Then the uh, lymphocyte rich, it is less common, comprises of 5% of the cases. And lymphocyte depleted is rare. It comprises only 1% of the Hodgkin's lymphoma cases. So among all, the most commonest is nodular sclerosis. Now coming to the age group, as I already told you, it has a bimodal age distribution. So we'll see which type is common in which age group. So in the adolescents and the young adults, we have nodular sclerosis and the mixed cellularity. Whereas in the middle age, we have the lymphocyte depleted. And the, uh, in the older adults, mixed cellularity and lymphocyte rich is more common. Remember that mixed cellularity means it is mixed. It is present in the young and also in the elderly age group and nodular sclerosis in the younger age group. This is about the classic Hodgkin's lymphoma. The nodular lymphocyte predominant most common age group is 30 to 50 years. It peaks in 30 to 50 years, but it can also occur in the children. Now, when we see the sex, all the types of the Hodgkin's lymphoma are more common in the uh, male patients, whereas only the nodular sclerosis, it doesn't show any sex predilection. It's common both in the males and the females. Now, uh, association with the viral infection, the most common viral infections which are associated with the Hodgkin's lymphoma are uh, Epstein-Barr virus and the HIV virus. Now, Epstein-Barr virus infection occurs mostly in the lymphocyte depleted and lymphocyte rich. The lymphocytes associated one, they have Epstein-Barr virus infections. Whereas uh, the mixed cellularity, again, mixed, it has both EBV infection and it's also associated with the HIV infection. But the difference is mixed cellularity occurring in the elderly patients, it is associated with the HIV infection. Whereas the mixed cellularity uh, occurring in the younger, in the children, it is associated with the EBV infection. Nodular sclerosis, it is rarely associated. And nodular lymphocyte predominant type, it is not associated with the EBV. But nowadays they are telling that 3 to 5 percent of the cases, even they are finding the association with the EBV. 
Now coming to the staging system of uh, the Hodgkin's lymphoma. Why I am telling the staging system before is when we will be discussing about the individual type of the Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, uh, individual type presence uh, in the individual in the different stages. So that's why we should know what is the staging system. So we have uh, the Ann Arbor's uh, staging system for the lymphomas. It's for Hodgkin's and the non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And in this stage, one means it is involvement of a single single lymph node region with or without the involvement of the single extra lymphatic organ or the site. Whereas stage two is involvement of two or more lymph node regions on the same side of the diaphragm with or without the localized contagious involvement of the extranodal organ or the site and stage three is we have involvement of the lymph nodes on both sides of the diaphragm with or without the uh, localized contagious involvement of an extranodal organ or the site and the stage four is we have the Extranodal, uh, extra lymphatic organ involvement or the sites with or without the extra lymph nodal involvement. So here lymph nodes is not necessary. Without lymph nodal involvement also we can have the diffuse involvement of the extra lymphatic organs. So these are the four stages. And again each stage is divided into A and B. Like uh, depending upon the presence of the B symptoms. I'll tell you what are the B symptoms. If the B symptoms are present then it becomes 1B. If the B symptoms are absent, then it becomes 1A. So each stage is again divided into 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, 3A, 3B and 4A, 4B depending upon the presence of B symptoms. Now what are these B symptoms? These three are uh, the B symptoms. That is first one is unexplained weight loss of greater than 10% of the normal body weight. And another one is unexplained fever. The patient will have a fever which persists for some days. Then he will not have the fever. He will have an ephemeral period. And again, there will be recurrence of the fever. This we call as um, Pell Epstein's fever. It means a fever occurring for period. Then again, febrile, Then again, febrile. That we call it as a Pell Epstein fever. And drenching night sweats. So these three are the B symptoms. Weight loss, fever and drenching night sweats. So if the B symptoms are present, the stage becomes 1B and if the B symptoms are absent, it becomes 1A. Now what is the gross appearance of the lymph nodes or the organs which are involved by the Hodgkin's lymphoma? So grossly when you see lymph nodes have rubbery consistency, they are firm and they are nodular and when the cut section is taken, they have a bulging fish flesh like appearance and if it is nodular sclerosis obviously nodularity will be more prominent and when the organs like spleen are involved appearance will be multiple nodules will be seen and if we see microscopically these nodules we see in the white pulp so grossly when we see lymph node is enlarged and it is having a firm consistency and has cut section has a nodular fish flesh like appearance Now coming to the individual type, the first one is the nodular sclerosis, the most common subtype. Uh, this is the most common one because it constitutes about 65 to 75 percent of the cases. And as I told you, both males and females are equally affected. And the commonest uh, site of involvement is it is a mediastinal and um, or it can be cervical. Most commonest is mediastinal or it can be cervical also. And uh, these patients usually present in the stage 2 disease. Now I think you remember stage 2 means involvement of one or more lymph nodal sites on the same side of the diaphragm. So most of the patients are in the stage 2 disease and uh, age is it peaks at 15 to 34 years. So they are in the uh, young and the adolescent age group only we will be having this nodular sclerosis and nodular sclerosis the patients will be presenting with the B symptoms in 40% of the cases. So morphology wise when you see grossly the cut section of the lymph node has a nodular pattern because extensive fibrosis will be there which will be dividing the entire lymph node into the nodules. So you have a nodular pattern and when we see microscopically the three important features are sclerosis, nodular pattern and lacunar type of the RSL. Sclerosis is uh, you have a thickened fibrous bands which have a lots of collagen in it and these bands are extending from the capsule. 
So thickened fibrous capsule will be present. From the capsule, you have this thickened fibrous bands which will be extending into the lymph nodes, dividing the lymph nodes into the nodules. So that causes the nodular pattern. And the collagen which is present in this fibrous tissue, the collagen bands, they have a birefringent green color when viewed under the polarized microscope. And uh, in this, we have the type of the RSLs what we see is lacunar type of the RSLs will be seen. So when we see microscopically the cell type what we see in the nodular sclerosis is we have typically the T cells more prominent we have the T cells which will be expressing the CD4 antigen and uh, we have the lacunar type of the RSLs and they form the nodule and this will be surrounded by the fibroblasts which will be producing the collagen. So we have macrophages, we have the T cells and we have the lacunar type of the RSLs which will be arranged in the form of a nodule which will be surrounded by the fibroblasts and we have the collagen. Now, uh, as I told you, the immunophenotyping of the RSLs, all the classic type of the Hodgkin's lymphoma will have the similar immunophenotyping and the lacunar cells they have they are CD15 positive, CD30 positive and PAX5 positive whereas they are negative for CD45 which is a common leukocyte antigen and other B cell and the T cell markers. Only these three comes positive in the RSLs, lacunar type of the RSLs. Prognosis of nodular sclerosis, it is better than the other types of the classic Hodgkin's lymphoma. And if the mediastinal uh, lymph nodes, they are very massive, then the patient will have the uh, bad prognosis. So it's an adverse prognostic marker. Now that was about nodular sclerosis. Now next is the mixed cellularity. This is the next most common uh, type of the Hodgkin's lymphoma, which comprises about 20 to 25% of the cases. So remaining all the types of Hodgkin's lymphoma, they are more common in the male. And as I told you, it is mixed means it occurs in both the age groups, in the younger age group and in the elderly age group. And also it is associated with both the type of the viruses, CBV and HIV. So in the children, the patients are uh, children, the patients are associated with EBV, whereas the second peak occurring in the elderly age group, they are associated with the HIV infection. And these patients usually they present in the stage three or stage four. That means lymph nodes on both the diaphragm are affected or you can have diffused involvement of the extra lymphatic organs also. And the most common presentations you will have peripheral lymph node. As I told you, stage four means you will have the involvement of other organs like the spleen, bone, marrow, liver and other organs are also involved in this. And these patients also present with the, most frequently they present with the B symptoms. Now, when we see the microscopic picture, mixed cellularity, as the name suggests, mixed means we have all types of the cells in this. So we have uh, the two types of the T cells, which are expressing CD4. Then we have isnophils, we can see the neutrophils, we can see the plasma cells and the macrophages. All the types of the cells we will be seeing and uh, the RSL, the type is mononuclear variant of the RS cells. Now this also this RSL also has the same immunophenotyping like the lacunar type means 15, 30 and the Pax5 they are positive. Prognosis is better only but it is worse than the nodular sclerosis. Now next one is the lymphocyte rich type. This is uncommon form. Uh, it uh, comprises of about 5% of the cases and this occurs in the elderly males age group is the elderly age group and we see the male predominance in this these patients doesn't have the b symptoms b symptoms are very rare in this and uh, the uh, stage of the clinical presentation usually it is stage one and the stage two and the patients will have the peripheral lymph node involvement and in these patients rarely we have the mediastinal involvement usually they present with the cervical lymph nodes but the mediastinal involvement is very rare in this and the virus associated with this is also EBV. Remember that lymphocyte rich, lymphocyte depleted, the names we have lymphocytes, they both are associated with the Epstein-Barr virus infection. Now 
and when we see the morphology lymph node architecture it is diffusely effaced and uh, or it may have the nodularity if you remember the normal lymph node architecture under the capsule we have the cortex and then we have the medulla and cortex will have the lymphoid follicles which will be showing the germinal centers so that pattern is completely effaced either it is diffusely effaced and we see the sheets of the cells or there can be a vague nodularity and uh, the cells predominantly we see are uh, the lymphocytes and the rs cells very rarely we see or even we may not find the eosinophils and the neutrophils and this nodularity is because of the presence of the residual b cell follicles and the b cells are usually abundant mantle zone b cells will be present here and we have cd3 t cells which will be forming the rosettes around in the neoplastic elements now if you remember the previous uh, types of the hodgkins lymphoma what we have seen the mixed cellularity and nodular sclerosis there they were also t cells but they were expressing cd4 whereas the lymphocyte rich the t cells which are present here express the cd3 and they are uh, the predominant cell type in this is the b cell that is also the mantle zone b cells will be present here here also the rs cell is mononuclear variant this also has the same immunophenotyping like the classic rs cells it has a very good prognosis among all the classic type the lymphocyte rich type has a very good prognosis next one is the lymphocyte depletion type this is the least common type and uh, as usual age and the sex is middle aged men with the middle aged persons with the male predominance males are more commonly affected and uh, the site is retroperitoneal lymph nodes abdominal organs and the bone marrow is usually affected here also the patient will present in the stage 3 and 3 or 4 Three means lymph lymph nodes involved on both sides of the diaphragm, and the four means you have the diffuse organ involvement, extra lymphatic organ involvement. So patient will present in the stage three and the four. Virus associated here is also the EBV virus, and the patient will have the B symptoms. So if you remember the mixed cellularity and lymphocyte depletion type, they both will present in the stage three and four. They have Uh, extra lymphatic organ involvement now when we see the morphology of it as the name suggests lymphocyte depletion means we have the paucity of the lymphocytes the number of lymphocytes will be less and we have abundance of the rs cells now in this we have two patterns diffuse fibrosis and the reticular pattern when we see the diffuse fibrosis prominently we have this Uh, fibroblastic proliferation and more of this macrophages and uh, few lymphocytes will be seeing along with more of the rs cells whereas a reticular pattern is we have a predominance of this rs cells which will be pleomorphic or the anaplastic type so uh, remember that fibrosis diffuse fibrosis fibrosis means more of the fibroblasts and paucity of the cells reticular pattern means you have predominance of rs cells which can be pleomorphic or it, they can have anaplastic features also and uh, this immunophenotyping it will be again similar to the classic rs cells and prognosis is less favorable when compared to the other subtypes depletion uh, type it has a bad prognosis whereas lymphocyte rich has the best prognosis now the last one that uh, all the previous one are classic type of the hodgkins lymphomas now this one is nodular lymphocyte predominant type of the hodgkins lymphoma this comprises about 10% of all the hodgkins lymphoma cases now this is also more common in the male patients and the age group when we see it peaks in about 30 to 50 years but it can also occur in the children but most commonly it occurs in 30 to 50 years and the site of involvement are usually it is cervical axillary or inguinal here also the mediastinal involvement and bone marrow involvement is very rare so the patients will usually present in the stage 1 and 2 stage 1 means single group of the lymph nodes are involved and stage 2 is uh, two or more lymph nodal areas are involved but they are present on the same side of the diaphragm 
and the lymphocyte predominant type is not associated with the viruses but now now recently they are telling that 3 to 5 percent of the cases have been found to be associated but the older books they give that it is not associated with the viruses 3 to 5 percent of them they transform into diffuse large b cell lymphomas and prognosis in this also it is excellent prognosis now what when we see the morphology of the nodular lymphocyte predominant type Again, the lymph node has an effaced architecture with the nodular infiltrate of the small round lymphocytes. Now, these lymphocytes they are admixed with the histiocytes. See here, uh, this is the lymph node. This is the capsule. And one important feature for this is we have an attenuated rim of the normal lymph node. Uh, the normal uh, lymph nodal parenchyma will be present as an attenuated rim, and below that we have the uh, this. Uh, Uh, lymphocytes and uh, predominantly the nodular pattern what you are seeing is formed because of the b cells they are expanded b cell follicles and within that only we have the rs cells also and the typical rs cells what we see here are the lymphocyte histiocyte type what we call it as a popcorn cells so when these uh, nodules of the b cells are having histiocytes and these rs cells it gives a mottled appearance to this and here also we don't have any eosinophils or the neutrophils now when we see the cell type what we see in the nodular lymphocyte predominant we have the b cells which are predominating and then we have the follicular dendritic cells and in between we see this rs cells which are lymphocyte histiocyte type what we call them as a popcorn cells and also we have another type of the t follicular helper cells remember that we don't find these dendritic cells in any other type of the hodgkin's lymphoma this is the one nodular lymphocyte predominant type where we see this follicular dendritic cells and typical rs cell what we see here is the lymphocyte histiocyte variant that is popcorn type of the rs cell now again we have uh, as i told you when we see in uh, the low power we find the nodularity so that nodular pattern also we have a different uh, patterns in this nodular lymphocyte predominant type pattern a is where you have typically b cell rich nodules which are having the rs cells the pattern b is the nodules will not be rounded but instead they will be serpiginous but they are uh, again b cell rich and we have the rs cells in them which are surrounded by the t cells which are forming a rosettes now pattern c is we see a round nodules with rs cells but we can even find the extra nodular rs cells also so uh, there are popcorn cells this is pattern c pattern uh, d is the nodule is t cell rich and we have the uh, rs cells within the nodules and even the extra nodular pattern e is we have no nodularity but diffuse uh, t cell and the histiocyte uh, rich large b cell lymphoma like pattern we will be seeing predominant cell type what we see is the t cells and we have the rs cells in that then the pattern f is we have predominantly b cells uh, with the t cells which will be present here and there that gives a diffuse moth eaten b cell rich uh, pattern in the lymphocyte nodular lymphocyte predominant type so we have six patterns in this three are b cell rich and uh, two are t cell rich and the last one it has both t and the b cell but it is b cell rich only so these are the patterns of the nodular lymphocyte predominant type now as i told you the immunophenotyping of this popcorn cell that is lymphocyte histiocyte type of the reed sternberg cell is different from the rs cells which are present in the classic hodgkin's lymphoma they have a multilobated nucleus resembling the popcorn kernel and these uh, rs cells they express typically cd20 they are cd45 positive bcl6 positive cd79a positive pax5 positive and oc2 positive and they are negative for cd15 and 30 now actually all the rs cells in the hodgkin's lymphomas they are positive for cd15 and 30 so uh, in this nodular lymphocyte predominant type the rs cells are typically negative for cd15 and 30 remaining all the markers will be positive 
Now, when we see the prognostic factors for the Hodgkin's lymphoma, first one is the age. If elderly age group, it is poor prognosis. Clinical staging, if the patient presents in the stage 4, obviously the patient will have the poor prognosis. If there is an extra nodal involvement, especially if it is distant rather than direct spread, means uh, rather than the contagious spread from the lymph node, if it is a distant spread, it is again a bad prognostic factor. Degree of splenic involvement, if the nodules in the spleen are more than 5, again it is a poor prognostic factor. And the microscopic types predominantly, lymphocyte uh, predominant type and nodular sclerosis, they both have uh, the best prognosis, whereas the mixed cellularity and lymphocyte depletion type, it has the worst prognosis. Then the laboratory findings, the patient having elevated lactate dehydrogenase, raised DSR, decreased hematocrit, elevated serum levels of soluble CD25 and CD30. If these are present, again, the patient has a poor prognosis. And CD15 negative expression, again, it has a poor prognosis. Treatment and when we see the treatment, stage 1 and uh, stage 2, it has 90% of the cure rate. Whereas uh, the five-year survival in the stage 3 and the stage 4, it is 60% to 70%, 60% and 70% respectively. And uh, instead of giving the chemotherapy, radiotherapy is better because the chemotherapy, it leads to development of the secondary tumors. So now they are preferring mostly radiotherapy for these cases. And anti-CD30 antibodies, they give excellent results uh, in the patients who, ha who, are, who have uh, failed with this conventional therapy. So that is about the treatment and the prognosis. So when we see the summary, as you remember, nodular sclerosis, mixed cellular, lymphocyte-rich, lymphocyte depleted are the classic and nodular lymphocyte predominant is the another type. So classic and the nodular lymphocyte two types we have. And uh, when we see the uh, this uh, most common type among them is nodular sclerosis. The least common is lymphocyte depleted type. And uh, the sex of involvement is nodular sclerosis. Both males and females are equally affected, whereas remaining all have the male predominance. And when we see the age group, the nodular sclerosis, it's more common in the younger age group. Mixed cellularity, it is present both in the younger age group and elderly patients. Lymphocyte rich, elderly, lymphocyte depleted, it is present in the middle age. Whereas nodular lymphocyte predominant, it occurs peaks in the 30 to 50 years of the age group and when we see the virus association only the nodular sclerosis and uh, this uh, nodular lymphocyte predominant doesn't have the uh, association with the virus remaining three has association autophage lymphocyte rich and lymphocyte depleted they are associated with the ebv mixed cellularity is mixed type it is associated both with the ebv and the hiv and b symptoms we see uh, in the nodular sclerosis mixed cellularity and lymphocyte depleted whereas lymphocyte rich and lymph nodular lymphocyte predominant doesn't have uh, the patient doesn't present uh, with the B symptoms and when we see microscopically nodular sclerosis and the mixed cellularity the predominant type of the cells are the T cells expressing CD4 and uh, the, the nodular sclerosis along with that we have lacunar type of the RS cells and the fibroblasts which will be surrounding the nodules. Whereas mixed cellularity as the name suggests we have all types of the cells along with the T cells. We have neutrophils, isnophils, plasma cells and classic RS cells and then we have mononuclear type of the RS cells also. Whereas lymphocyte rich predominantly we have the nodules which are formed by the mantle zone B cells and then we have uh, T cells forming a rosette around the mononuclear variant of the RS cells. Now these uh, T cells, they will be expressing CD3. And lymphocyte depleted, as the name suggests, we have paucity of the lymphocytes. And uh, in this, we have two patterns, as I told you, diffuse fibrosis and reticular. If it is diffuse fibrosis, we have more of this fibroblasts and the histiocytes. Whereas if it is reticular type, we have predominance of the RS cells, which have anaplastic features. Then uh, nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin's lymphoma, it has typically popcorn type of the RS cells and we have predominance of B cells admixed with the follicular dendritic cells and also 
the T follicular helper cells. So this is uh, the summary of the microscopy that finishes your Hodgkin's lymphoma. Thank you friends for listening patiently. Thank you.